Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Shannon Burberry and I am one of the business development officers at GFD. Today, uh, we're going to give you a overview of a affiliation that we have made with INEX and the Closing Affairs Connected product. Joining me today is Corinne Levectoire from INEX. Good morning. Good morning, Shannon. How are you today, Corinne? <laughs> good, good. Excited to be here and excited to share with everybody this uh, Closing Affairs Connected package we have. Perfect. So we have um, two parts to this uh, overview that we're going to do, and that is that we're going to start with what exactly the product is. We're going to show you uh, how your client family would use this product, and we're also going to help you as funeral professionals understand the back end of the product. So there'll be two pieces to this presentation today. So first of all, if we can just start out, Kareen, can you tell us what is Closing Affairs Connected? Absolutely. Closing Affairs Connected is a really simple, really effective digital aftercare tool that allows funeral professionals to assist their families using three digital touches. Basically, the Closing Affairs website gives families access to all the guidance, all the tools that they are going to need to close the estate. And then there is also the INEX support website. And that site gives funeral professionals the ability to advise the credit bureaus of the death on behalf of the family, and also to provide some pre-populated letters to the family that will assist them in dealing with relevant uh, government and business entities. Okay, so I know we've said that this process is uh, an easy process. Can you tell us um, a little bit about how the funeral professional actually gets the family, um, you know, operational with, with the product? Sure, Will. It really is easy and simple. We send all of the digital tools for the program in an initial email titled Closing Affairs Connected Materials and Directions. So it all comes by email. That email includes an Excel spreadsheet that has 100 access codes to the Closing Affairs website. It also includes a getting started PDF document for the family, and we call that Welcome to Closing Affairs Connected, and another PDF for the funeral directors, step-by-step -step instructions for them. The very first thing a funeral director or pre-planner needs to do is send an email to their family issuing them one of the access codes. This will allow the family to create an account on the Closing Affairs website. We've provided a template that goes along with the access code so that every code that's issued to a family can be tracked and all the follow-up activity related to the other steps, the other two other touches, digital touches to the family, are all tracked on this spreadsheet. Each one of the emails then also sets up the expectation for the next contact with the family. So we've made this very step-by-step. -step. We've given the funeral director all of the tools. They can edit it, customize it, make it feel their own, but we've really tried to provide all the structure they need to just navigate this with ease. Perfect. So what does the family actually experience? Like what's their experience when they, um, when they visit your site? I'll tell you. Um, the funeral director will send that email and it will have the access code in it. Families are instructed to log on to closingaffairs.com and they'll get an initial login screen just like you see here. The very first time they log in, they enter the access code on the right hand side. This will prompt them to create an account and every other time that they log in, they will be already registered and they will just enter their username and their code that they've created, their password code they've created for themselves. So it's a very intuitive, easy site to get into. Once they're in the site, they will be greeted with a homepage that gives them two options. Do you have a will? Are you settling in a state with a will or without a will? So those are, that's the first decision the family needs to make. They click on one of those two options and then they are taken into the heart of the website. You'll notice there's a ribbon, a key ribbon bar that runs across the top of the website. That's how they will navigate it. It's broken down into 12 different steps for settling the estate. 
It is exceptionally intuitive. It is user-friendly. It is legally vetted and routinely updated. We have a team of great lawyers that helps us keep this up to date. There are hundreds of links in this site. There are tools to complete letters and forms and worksheets and really everything that the family could possibly need to work with the other professionals for the 18 to 24 months after the death and settle the estate. So getting families, giving families access to this website is the first touch, the first digital touch point in this aftercare platform. Well, it certainly seems very comprehensive and, um, you know, the, the user-friendly part is exactly what uh, our client families need when they're feeling overwhelmed. So I, I like the way that this is, is laid out. So the second point of contact, what happens at that point then? Well, that's where the funeral professional is then going to notify the credit bureau of the death. And that's on a separate website. That's on our INEX support website. And are we able to take a quick look at that as well? Can we see that site? Absolutely. Let me run you through that. It is just as easy, just as intuitive. It's inexsupport.com. And member firms will receive an email that will have a link so that they can create their own account on this website. Easy to do. They'll pick their username, password, follow the link, and they'll be able to log in with these um, going forward. Once they log in, you'll see on the main screen, again, this main screen has a top ribbon with four options, but once they log in and they come to the home page on this website, there's two things that they can do. They are either going to create a new profile or they will edit or change, manipulate, do something if they need to make a correction on an existing profile. But nine times out of 10, they're gonna come in here and they're just going to create a new profile. This screen also tracks how many profiles they've used and we top it up every two weeks back up to 100. So lots of volume, lots of profiles to be created. If they go through them faster than 102 weeks, just give us a call and we will top it up again. But first thing they're gonna do is click new profile. Once they do that, click new profile, they will be prompted to enter the first middle and surname of the deceased. Three simple pieces of, of identification. Enter that and click save. Next screen, it's going to tell them that this is going to use up one of the profiles. Are you sure you want to proceed? Yes, they definitely do. They, they just tap through this. And that's going to bring them into a form where they're going to enter some core data about the deceased. About nine, ten different data points go in here. Um, the deceased's date of birth, date of death, SIN number, some information about the executor, but just easy information that they're going to have at their fingertips gets populated into this page. From there, they click Save. And the next thing they're going to see is <clears throat> to make sure that they, they want to go ahead, click this, everything looks good. Um, they may receive a pop-up if they entered something in inaccuracy in the date of death or date of birth. So if there was, <clears throat> pardon me, an error in the SIN number, that's where that'll get caught there. But everything follows through real quickly. They say yes, they move from there. Once they've got that information populated, you'll see across the top ribbon again, there's four options. They're going to go over and click the Credit Bureau Upload option. It's going to bring up this screen. They're going to double check the information on the left, make sure that all the data they input was accurate. And then they are going to select the proof of death. They're going to click and browse for the proof of death. Again, very intuitive, the way you would do with so many other websites when you want to attach a file. So they have to find the proof of death on their computer system, click it, attach it, and then hit submit. So the next screen just shows what it looks like when they go browse their operating system, but they attach that, they hit submit, and that basically triggers the upload to our system for us to do a couple verification checks and then send it on to the credit bureaus. It's that simple. 
Well, I, there's only one thing that I uh, would like to ask you about in, in seeing that because it certainly does uh, seem very simple as far as doing that. Now, we do know that from time to time, our client families may give us um, some information that um, might change or perhaps there was an error made. If the funeral director was to make um, an omission in the transmission or the information changed for whatever reason, um, how does that affect that credit bureau? Because we know it's super important uh, to make sure the info is right. Good question. They can go back at any time and make a correction. I'll show you in just a couple more slides where we were on the home page and I'll show you how they can go back, make that correction with ease, no problem. Um, just before doing that, as they move through, they attach the document, um, submit the upload to us, but the next, the next screen they're going to see is going to be a reminder or a prompt for them to print a certificate. So we wanted to be able to provide families, well, provide the funeral professional or the pre-need person with something that they could give to the families just to confirm that this electronic upload had been completed. So the system prompts them to be able to print a certificate. And you'll see on a slide ahead here coming up, the certificate come, pops out, they can print it hard copy, keep a hard copy if they wish in the family's file, or they can, again, save it as a PDF and email it to the family. And that's that second point of contact, really. We've created a cover email um, that, again, they can change, but it sets up the expectation for then the third contact. So sending the credit bureau notification certificate and that cover email is the second point of contact if they realize in doing this that there has been an error which shannon just as you say i mean so many times we find out nope the, the sin number it was the incorrect sin number or the date of birth had changed or something like that no worries as i mentioned on the next screen you'll see we go back to the home page and remember, there were two options on the home page. You can create a new profile or you can correct a profile. That's exactly where you go. You click on the one that needs correcting. It's retained in our system for 10 days before it's uploaded to Equifax and TransUnion. And that retainer period is there because we know that these minor errors happen. If there is any data that needs to be updated in those 10 days, it can be done then. Otherwise, they're all gathered and they're all then electronically processed up to the credit bureaus. So really, really simple, easy, friendly, not to worry if there's any errors um, system. Perfect. So you mentioned the third step. So that's kind of our final step, I guess, in assisting families uh, with this yep. product. Digital, this is the third outreach and the third outreach is again up on those that main ribbon that main bar that you saw on the website under uh, under sorry family documents the closing affairs website that the families get access to that has dozens literally dozens of form letters that they can complete for various estate functions contacting different government agencies and businesses and organizations but several of the most commonly applicable letters we've pulled those into this funeral director's website we pulled it into the inex support website under this family documents tab the letters that the pre-need person or the funeral professional sends to the family is going to depend on their knowledge about the family and their needs but bottom line is virtually every estate, virtually every family that you serve needs to address matters like returning the driver's license, notifying to cancel the SIN card, canceling the healthcare card, returning passport. Those are some just common things that virtually every family has to, has to take care of. So all the funeral professional does is click the letter that they want on this website. You'll see next that once you select a letter from the site, it comes out pre-populated with all of the information about the deceased and the executor that was provided when they created the profile earlier to do the credit bureau upload. All of that information is contained in the letter. It can be edited as needed because it's a, a rich text format letter. It can be saved in a Word file. 
as the pre-need person or the funeral professional works with each letter, they're going to save them again onto their system. Nothing is saved on our website. All of the documents, all of the data, all of the information is kept in, on the funeral professional system. So the, there's no risk of breach, certainly using this website, a breach of data or anything. Once you've created all the letters, guess what? You simply email them off to the family. Well, I think that's an excellent resource, and I know that many establishments have already some aftercare uh, procedures in place, and they may be doing some things um, already. So this is, uh, as I understand it, it's really an enhancement to their existing programs. So they don't have to change what they're doing. This is enhancing what they're already offering to families, and the fabulous part is, is that in this uh, situation that we're in right now, uh, where we need to be doing most things remotely. Uh, this is just so key to the ease uh, in supporting their families in doing that. And certainly, um, I know we're going to get to the to the cost of this, um, the um, benefits to our members uh, through our affiliation uh, that we've made in, in offering this uh, product to the membership. Um, so perhaps you can share a little bit about uh, uh, the cost and and. I will. Thank you. We've, we've made this as cost effective as possible. Being able to offer it as a digital solution, it's just, it's so simple. Within 10 minutes, the uh, pre-need person, the funeral professional can have all of this done for the family. They can do it ahead of time. Um, INEX, we're offering closing fares connected to the public, to the industry in general for a limited time during COVID and while we don't know what's going on for $24.95. But to GFD member firms, we're extending a 10% discount. So to be able to provide this level of service to their families, we're now looking at about $22.45, I think it comes out to. So just a really great, as you said, enhancement if they already have a program in place or a great basis, a great structure to get started with in order to build the program. We give you all the pieces of the puzzle. The kind of takeaway points that I would emphasize about this is that Closing Affairs Connected is simple. It really is simple. We've given you all the tools, the resources, the scripts, the emails, everything at your fingertips. It's applicable to every single family, regardless of the family's economic means, regardless of their religious beliefs, regardless of the disposition that they've selected, they still have an estate to settle and Closing Affairs Connected delivers that value. It's fast, I tell you, after you get one or two of these under your belt, the pre-need person is just gonna be able to run through this in a matter of minutes to be able to provide this to each family. It provides at least four additional touch points. I mean, depending on how many phone calls and outreaches, in addition to sending these digital um, packets to the family, it allows them to stay in touch over that 18 to 24 months. And it really does provide tremendous family to the fam or value to the families. Most families, most executors have never been an executor before. They don't know what they don't know, and they're just looking for that guidance and help. So we are thrilled to have aligned um, ourselves with GFD and, and be able to be here to offer this level of support to your member firms. Well, I thank you for your time today. And again, key points to our membership is that we have been looking for ways to make things uh, easier for them during this difficult time. We know that they're there in the front lines and, and the challenges that they're facing serving client families. So we've created, uh, of course, our COVID-19 page as a resource where our membership can go and find all kinds of things that can help them in the ease and process of looking after client families. This Closing Affairs Connected is just another tool. You will will find that at the end of our presentation, we are going to put a link uh, directly to uh, our site and, and our, uh, the product itself. So for any of the members who are interested in this product, you can certainly click on that link, or you can also reach out to any of the business development officers uh, in order to get yourself started with this program. And I know that on the screen right now, we can see your colleagues, Karine, and uh, the system that you have in place for both uh, setting things up on the sales end, the training, and the support. So thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure.
Take care, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And again, please feel free to visit uh, the gfd.org website. You'll find all kinds of resources there under the COVID-19 section. Thank you again. <music>